I think someone in the Western world at the present time lives with an inflation rate of above 5%. I'd say normal people between 5 and 7%, but in some cases much more. But in inflationary times, the rich people can make a lot of money. And the middle class and the poor classes lose out. This is precisely where we are in the global economy. Uh, The economy of the super rich is doing well. And of the middle classes of ordinary people like you and me, (laughs) is not doing all that well. Global inflation has reached historic levels during the past three years. The International Monetary Fund expects global inflation to fall, however, from 8.7% in 2022 to 6.8% in 2023 and 5.2% in 2024. Nigeria's inflation rate rose to 29.90% in January 2024, from 28.92% in December 2023. This is the highest it has been in two decades. India's retail inflation rose to 5.1% in January, while the country's economy grew 8.4% during the October-December quarter of the current financial year. The U.S. and the EU have seen inflation decline during the past few months, prompting central banks to pause interest rate hikes. Mark Faber asserts that the debate over recession or depression has been settled, contending that if one looks beyond misleading government statistics and focuses on real-world conditions, it becomes apparent that both the United States and the European Union have already plunged into a state of depression. Global inflation may risk rising again, primarily due to signs of a rebound in energy prices, particularly in crude oil. This week holds particular significance for market sentiment as major central banks, including the U.S. Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, the Swiss National Bank, the Bank of Japan, and the Reserve Bank of Australia, are slated to make decisions on their interest rates and provide insights into their future policy directions. While the Fed is anticipated to maintain its interest rate within the range of 5.25% to 5.50%, its stance on potential future rate adjustments could have substantial ramifications for global markets. The uneven recovery in the Eurozone may prompt the European Central Bank, ECB, to continue its accommodative monetary policy stance, which would likely sustain bullish sentiment in the market. Conversely, the Bank of England, BOE, is expected to maintain its interest rate at 5.25% for the current week, reflecting a cautious approach amidst ongoing economic uncertainties. Faber argues that if monetary conditions were truly tight, indicators such as stock market performance, bond spreads, and volatility indexes would exhibit different patterns. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. Whose rate of inflation do you take? Because your household's inflation is different than mine, and so forth and so on. And uh, the government, not only in the U.S., but worldwide, they have a vested interest to understate the cost of living increases. They have all kinds of seasonal adjustments and all kinds of hedonic adjustments and, and, and to show that the inflation is relatively low. In my view, And this is a a personal observation. I think someone in the Western world at the present time lives with an inflation rate of above 5%. I'd say normal people between 5 and 7%, but in some cases much more. When I look at the increase in insurance premiums that people have to pay, the increase in taxes, indirect taxation, and so forth. And uh, I also look at items. uh, How much does an item cost? Yes, the item may cost this, the same price, but then the companies reduce the quantity. And I look at these wonderful profits of corporations. have nothing against that. Better the corporations get the money than the government. Unfortunately, the corporations pay the government too much. In my view, the, the typical inflation is 5 to 7% at the present time. The 10 years U.S. Treasury is at around 4%, okay? So the interest rates, although it's gone up over the last uh, three years, uh, specifically two years, 
is still low. When we had the type of inflation we have at the present in the US in the 70s, the bond, the 10 years treasury was around 8% yield. In my view also, if money was tight, this is the point I was trying to make in my report. If money was tight, the stock market would not be at an all-time high. If money was tight, uh, spreads between junk bonds and uh, treasuries would not be so thin. They'd be, they'd be wide. If money was tight, volatility index, the VIX index, would be much higher. There are many symptoms that would argue that actually the Fed tells you that they tighten monetary conditions. But in fact, since last October, they eased. After addressing inflation concerns, Mark Faber elaborates on why he currently finds oil stocks to be compelling investment opportunities. The past week in the oil market has been characterized by a significant upswing, with light crude oil futures reaching over $81 per barrel, the highest since November. Global oil demand will increase by over 10% by 2028 and more than 16% by 2045 compared to 2022, according to the World Oil Outlook 2045 by the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries. Faber believes that despite environmental concerns and changing energy landscapes, the demand for oil will persist and possibly even rise in specific scenarios. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. Plus, the global economy now is not performing well. But once the demand for oil increases more in India, because we can look at the per capita consumption of oil, say, in the United States, in China, in Saudi Arabia, and in India. In India, the per capita consumption is about less than 7% of the U.S. per capita consumption. And India is an economy uh, who knows how far they will grow and so forth. But at the present time, the trend line grows, and I think it can be maintained for a few years, uh, will be around 6-7% per annum. So the oil demand from emerging economies will grow up, will increase. The supply won't go up very much because no new major oil fields have been found. And exploration is very expensive. And technically, at the present time, the commercial sector, in other words, the, the ones that know about the oil market, they have uh, reduced their short positions and are at the low level that is usually associated with market bottoms for oil. When everybody was investing in oil and uh, and uh, resource stocks instead of tech stocks in 1980. There was a huge bubble in energy stocks. Uh, most prominent among them was Dome Petroleum. Nobody knew what the value would be, but people bought it because it kept on going up. Anyway, uh, at that time, oil and energy combined was about 33% of the S&P 500 index. Now, the energy sector, I've read somewhere that recently Apple alone was worth more than all energy companies uh, in America. Now, as a percent of the S&P, they dropped and are less than 5% of the S&P 500 at the present time. So again, a uh, relative underperformance that is colossal. Agree with some of the views of the environmentalists. And I think we should uh, clean up our environment and so forth. But it doesn't make sense to use an electric vehicle, go to a charging station that is powered by coal-generated uh, electricity or by diesel engines at the power station. Doesn't make any sense. The madness of some of these environmentalists will actually increase the demand for oil because 
if you produce windmills uh, and blades for the windmills and so forth and so on. If you go and mine for copper, you need oil to generate the en energy to do that. Goldman Sachs now expects the Bank of Japan to raise interest rates for the first time in 17 years at its March meeting this week, bringing forward its previous forecast for an April decision. Investors may glean more on the Federal Reserve's resolve to ease and how close Japan is to finally exiting negative interest rates as central banks set policy for almost half the global economy. What potential implications do you see for the global economy if Japan moves towards exiting negative interest rates? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.